Hey guys, so I apologize for taking a little break there. That was not intentional. It's just life happens and I took a couple weeks off, which, you know, I, I regret, but we're back and I need to catch up on some things. I did go see Child's Play, so that review is still coming up. I have yet to see Annabelle, so I decided to do both of those reviews in one, Battle of the Dolls. Let's do that video instead. Hopefully that's okay with you. It's just I have a lot of movies to catch up on because summer seems to be the uh, time of year for the release of all the horror movies, so. But I figured that you guys would really want to hear my opinions on Midsummer first and foremost because it was one of my most hyped up movies of the year and I think in the whole horror community it's something that everyone's been looking forward to because it's obviously done by Ari Aster who brought us Hereditary last year. So Midsummer follows a group of friends who are traveling to Sweden to witness the Midsummer events that only occur every 90 years. It mostly follows a girl named Danny who has some family trauma that we see and she also has kind of an unstable relationship and she decided to tag along with her boyfriend and his friends to Sweden. I think the plot of this and all the characters are actually really believable. They all kind of have their own side stories and subplots even though it is mostly about Danny. We get enough of her to feel sympathy and empathy towards her when she's in Sweden. I think Midsummer is an amazing follow-up to Hereditary. Overall I did really like Midsummer. I do I think Hereditary is a bit better. Midsummer is much more straightforward. There's less subtleties and like underlying plot and story and things that you might not understand. It's more in your face and straightforward of what's going on. So you have to think less in this movie, but it is a good follow-up because it does maintain the weirdness and the horror elements that were in Hereditary. I mean, not the same horror elements. That would be weird. It's obviously a different movie, but you know what I mean. It's still in Ari Aster's style is what I'm trying to say. The first time I watched Hereditary, I wasn't really sure what was going on. I mentioned that in my review. It wasn't straightforward. It wasn't clear of what the story really was trying to say, whereas Midsummer, you get all the information you need throughout the film, so you don't have to watch it more than once to like get what's happening, which to me isn't a positive or a negative, it just is what it is. So I had built up this movie so much in my mind because I had heard all these people talking about how disturbing it was and how much anxiety they had watching it and how it was like nothing else they'd ever seen. And although that got me excited, I had a lot of anxiety going into the movie. I was like, am I gonna have a panic attack? Like I am a hyper sensitive person and so movies like this tend to affect me greatly and on one hand that's a good thing because I do go into these movies wanting to feel something you know you want movies to affect you you don't want them to just be like mm, that was okay I don't mind when they like give me anxiety sometimes that's a good experience and this movie I think had a good amount of that in it for me I categorize this movie a little bit with like Suspiria, Mother, uh, Hereditary of course where it's just kind of like this gradual escalation of things into like a really disturbing world and then you're like how did we get here it's like one of those kind of movies I even tweeted that I was feeling extra sensitive that day that I was going to see Midsummer, and multiple people warned me not to go when I'm feeling extra sensitive they're like it's probably not a good idea but of course I decided to go anyways because I don't let my sensitivity control my life so and it wasn't that bad it honestly wasn't too bad for someone who is sensitive I know some people like to hear my opinion about these kind of movies whether or not it affected me a lot because you want to know if it's going to affect you a lot. I think you can handle it. I mean, we all have different levels of sensitivity towards these kind of things and like disturbing aspects. Um, there is uh, gore in it if that's something that triggers your anxiety. Generally for me, it's just that feeling of un of like discomfort for the person. I have high empathy, so like I always picture myself in the protagonist's shoes and that can be a downfall when I'm trying to watch a movie like this because then I'm just, well actually it's a, it's a plus because I get to feel kind of what they're feeling. But I did feel like Midsummer had enough slow points to where I could recover from the disturbing aspects I just witnessed and like all of the heightened anxiety moments. There was a lot of slow points and I was actually really surprised with how slow some of the movie was. I mean, this movie's two and a half hours. I definitely think it could have been a little condensed. I think some of the scenes were a little bit too long and extended for no real reason. It obviously doesn't need to be like 100 all the time but like Hereditary I felt like was a good balance of unsettling horror elements with the slower like plot building 
uh, moments. That being said, I did feel that the pacing of Midsummer was really effective and well done because it does have that gradual escalation that really bothers me because you're just like looking back from the end of the movie like how what how do we get here? Like what what happened? How did I not witness all these like escalations? I mean this one's a little bit more straightforward than that. Like Mother is the best example of disturbing escalation and gradual escalation to where it's like so much anxiety by the end of the movie. Midsummer not quite like that because there are obvious moments like spikes in action that you know is the escalation so like we're following the the plot points. I'm trying not to give spoilers or anything. I will do spoilers towards the end of the video though, but I will give a warning because I know a lot of people are trying to avoid spoilers right now. But the way it was paced and the acting and everything, it really felt like we were going on this journey with this group of friends and like discovering things as they were and just like going with it. They they don't know anything about what's going on. They don't understand it, neither do we, but we're all just kind of going along for this ride. Like, I guess we're gonna do this now. And this movie is honestly my worst nightmare. Like this, this bothered me in a way that wasn't like too much, it wasn't too much anxiety, but it definitely affected me because psychedelics and stuff like that, which not really a spoiler, they do psychedelics in this, but I think that's obvious based on the trailer. So the fact they're in this like foreign place, unknown, and then they're on these drugs, it's just like, a nightmare like I would rather do anything else than do that also this is in the beginning of the movie so it's not really a spoiler but when they're all sitting down to have their first meal and there's like a shot of liquid that they're taking I assume it's alcohol I think I don't know am I the only one that was like maybe not a good idea because if you're in a situation that's like cult like and it feels different and strange I know you want to be respectful of the culture but maybe it's just because we have the perspective of this is a horror movie so we know that it, it's like a weird situation whereas in that moment for them, it probably, they didn't have that perspective. I mean, it's fiction. What am I, I'm talking about it like it happened. But like, it already feels a little culty, so why risk it, you know? <laughs> so overall, I, I liked this movie a lot, pretty much as much as I thought I was going to. It lived up to the hype for me, although it wasn't as anxiety inducing as I anticipated, which is actually a good thing for me. It wasn't too much. It does get gory, highly gory, and very disturbing in true Ari Aster fashion, so that's to be expected. It does have it's moments where you feel trapped like the characters and it's just like this overwhelming feeling that just is strangeness going on. I think this is a really good movie to watch and rewatch every summer to like get in the mood. It has like very summer vibes but you know it all takes place during daytime which is something that is really admirable that he was able to make a movie that was so effective and scary and have most of it take place during the day. And so this is one that I think would be really fun to rewatch every year to like get in the mood for summertime. So I'm going to talk a little bit about spoilers. Just the, the last couple comments I have are a little spoilery so I'm not going to go too much into the whole ending and all the plot and everything like that but just talk about a few other points uh, that I want to discuss. So if you have not seen it and are avoiding spoilers right now then please turn off the video now but definitely go see it when you can. So towards the middle to end of the movie Danny does become their May Queen which is kind of I think the like queen that will bless their crops and everything to make sure they have a bountiful season and I really think that this was more of a ploy to get her away from her boyfriend Christian because he was approved to mate with one of the Swedish women and that I mean it had gotten weird up until that point but that's when things get kind of really weird. One thing that really bothers me in movies like if you want to disturb me the easiest fastest way to do that is to have a disturbing sex scene like when you mix sexuality and sex scenes with uh, disturbing aspects it's a no for me like it makes me so uncomfortable I'm not a prude or anything it's not the sex part it's the disturbing mixed with it I just it makes me really uncomfortable which is good you want to feel unsettled when you watch a movie like this that's the goal so that was effective for sure there's lots and lots of nudity so expect that going into it there's honestly probably more nudity than there is gore so oh and I also wanted to talk a little bit about the gore because Ari Aster clearly loves his head trauma and I feel like that's something that's to be expected with all of his movies from here on out I almost feel like though he saw how the viewers reacted 
connected to the head trauma in Hereditary, how it was just like a jump cut straight to the gore that you couldn't, you didn't have enough time to look away before you saw it and you just can't unsee that. But what I felt with Midsummer is he saw how effective it was in Hereditary, right? And then he decided to take that and times it by 10 in Midsummer. So there's a lot more head trauma and honestly it was a bit overdone, like a little overwhelming as how many times he showed it because I just didn't think it was necessary. What Hereditary got right was the amount that it showed. Like we didn't need to see it more than once, you know, but in Midsummer we definitely see it more than one or two times and it's just not necessary. I think it's more effective when you limit the amount of times that you do that hard cut straight to head trauma when you're not expecting it. Head trauma for me is one thing that does really disturb me, but it's not like the worst thing that like gets to me, but there is a lot of it in Midsummer to where it was like, I had to look away sometimes and it's hard to with Ari Aster's movies because he makes it so you cannot look away. So like you can't avoid seeing it every single time because that, to me that made it more jarring and more effective because it was that hard cut and to do that more than once it's like now I'm just getting annoyed at how many times I have to see this because I, I've already seen it like I know what it looks like thank you it's in my head now I can't get it out although Ari Aster did claim that Midsummer is his first horror movie because he made Hereditary as a family drama film Sure, let's go with that. So the movie was pretty much what I expected. There weren't like real surprises. I had heard a lot of the things uh, leading up to the movie that it was like a good breakup movie, which it is, and it, you know, was disturbing, which it was, and it is very Ari Aster. Like you're gonna get a lot of this similar feeling that you got when you're watching Hereditary. Although I do think it's a little less shocking in Midsummer than Hereditary. I think Hereditary was a better movie overall, but I did really like it and I'm definitely going to rewatch it and probably own it and rewatch it every summer to get in the mood. Summer activities. <laughs> if you've seen Midsummer, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Did it surprise you? Did it disappoint you? Anything like that, please leave it down below and I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.